Hey everybody, I'm Darren Aknashny. I'm the CEO and founder of Flock Audio. Today we're going to take a brief look at the Flock Audio patch system. I'm going to walk you through the hardware and then we're going to jump right into the software. So let's get into it. Here we go. So starting at the right side of the patch system, we have the power toggle switch with LED. Moving on to the center, we have what we call the LED indicator section. Digging a little bit more into this section, we see that we have a host signal LED. This LED will indicate that your patch hardware is in communication with your computer system. If it is ever flashing, this means that you've lost the connection and you need to reestablish it between the hardware and your CPU. Right below it is the 48 volt front inputs. This LED indicates that the patch system has 48 volt phantom power sent to the front two inputs 31 and 32 on the front panel of the patch system. The final LED is the external 48 volt warning. Because the patch system has 48 volt phantom power built right on board, there's no need to send phantom power through the system. This LED will illuminate red whenever a preamp is sending 48 volt phantom power to the patch system. Looking to the far left side of the hardware unit, you'll see 31 and 32 inputs and 31 and 32 outputs. This is what we call the additioning strip. These inputs and outputs are activated via the patch app and are used for integrating outside audio gear quickly into your patch system setup. It's important to note that when you enable 31 and 32 to the front panel, it flips those connections from the rear side of the chassis to the front. So when you are done using them, you all have to return those to the back by disabling them within the patch app. Now let's take a look at the rear side of the chassis where all the connections are. Starting with the USB host control connection, there is a USB A to USB B cable provided in the Flock Audio Patch System box. This will allow you to control your connection between your hardware and your software. Next we'll take a look at the power supply connection, which is a 6 pin connector that allows you to actually thread the connector onto the chassis to prevent any types of dropouts in power or accidental slips and unplugging the system. All analog connections from outboard hardware is all connected via a TASCAM wiring format into a DB25 or D sub connection. IO31 and 32 alternate between the front and rear panel when activated in the patch app. This allows you to flip 31 and 32 from the rear side of the chassis to the front auditioning strip so you can test out gear that's not regularly hooked up into your system. Now let's take a look at the controller portion of the patch system, the Flock Audio Patch App, an intuitive and efficient way of controlling all your analog routings right from your computer screen. The patch app is divided into four major sections. Let's start with the hardware index. The hardware index is where you'll catalog and organize all of your analog equipment that's connected to the patch hardware. Now we'll move to the upper right hand corner of the patch app where our stored routings menu is. This is where you'll be able to create, store and recall previous routings at any time. Next we have our active routing section. This is essentially our signal flow section where you will drag and drop any of the digital racks from our hardware index into a preferred signal flow or path that you choose. You can activate 48 volt phantom power from any of the first empty rack spaces or empty slots by clicking the plus 48 volt icon. This will activate 48 volt phantom power to the specific digital rack that you've placed into the empty slot. Each digital rack space will have the letter M to the right side of it. This means MALT. By clicking this M, you are effectively telling the hardware to split the signal off of that current rack and start a malting process, which will allow you to be able to have additional processing from one single source. Now we have the toggle and control section. This section allows a user to quickly clear all available paths, bank through various paths, or enable the front inputs or outputs on the hardware portion of the system. Here we're looking at paths. Paths are signal flow. All paths or signal flows go from top to bottom. Digital racks. All analog gear that is connected to the patch hardware is represented as a digital rack in the hardware index. The searchable index makes it very easy and efficient to find gear you may otherwise be continuously scrolling past. Quickly just type in the whole name or a couple letters and it'll immediately pull up that piece of analog gear. 
The host signal text located at the bottom right hand corner of the Flock Audio patch app indicates that the patch app and hardware are communicating. It follows the same rule as the LED located on the front panel of the hardware. The hardware setup menu is where you manage and organize all of the analog equipment that's connected to your patch hardware system. Here you can go into various features and functions to customize it to your personal preference. Forget about ever trying to find a template, printing and cutting it to fit in your patch bay. This is where you control and organize and label all of your analog gear that you have connected to the patch system. You'll notice a few other functions listed as well. The 48 volt safeguard switch is a safety feature built into the system to stop any piece of analog gear from ever receiving 48 volt phantom power, such as a compressor, EQ, etc. By default, the patch system hardware is linked. This means any corresponding input or output are automatically linked together to populate one digital rack. However, you can unlink these by clicking the lock icon. This will allow us to separately designate an input from an output in case you're using a microphone, for example. If you're only doing mixing or mastering and may never ever require the 48 volt phantom power, we've built in a master bypass for the 48 volt. It's located in the hardware menu. This way you can shut it off for the complete system and never have to worry about it. You can toggle the rack numbers on each digital rack on or off. This allows you to free up some more space if you have longer text fields. Located at the top right hand corner of the hardware setup menu, there's an import and export list. This allows you to import or export hardware lists into your patch app. We'll explain this in a little bit more detail in the later examples. Now let's take a look at some real time examples of setting up routings. Let's start out by setting up a very simple vocal chain routing. We'll navigate to the left side of the patch app where our hardware index is. In the hardware index is all of the analog equipment we have connected to our patch hardware. We'll start by scrolling through to find a microphone. Then a preamp. You'll notice a green P that illuminates between the digital racks as I drag and drop them into empty slots. This P stands for path. All signal flows in the patch app are called paths. Let's continue on. A compressor, an EQ, and then we'll go back into our interface. Right here, we set up a very simple vocal chain routing, but we can take it a step further. On the right hand side of all these digital racks is a letter M. This M stands for malt. We can now effectively malt or split the signal off any of these digital racks for other processing. I'm going to go ahead and click the M next to the preamp. Then I'll choose a different compressor, another EQ, and then we'll go back into the Apollo input too. Now we have two stems of audio from one audio source going into our DAW, but processed both differently. Now let's say we really love this vocal chain and we wanted to save it for a later date. We can save and recall this at any later time by going up to our routings menu at the top right hand side of the patch app. I'll click new. Then I'll save it. After I save it, you'll notice that in the menu here or the drop down portion of it, it says vocal one, exactly what I saved it as. I'm going to go ahead and clear all the paths. And then I'm going to easily recall it by just clicking it. Automatically, the patch app will recall this routing and tell the hardware to reroute this pre-existing routing. If I didn't want to save this in the routings folder and I wanted to move it off into a session folder, I can easily do that by clicking open routings folder. In here, it will have a file saved with the extension .flock. I can take this click on it and drag and drop it into any artist session folder and then pull it back up at a later date. This makes it incredibly easy to stay organized. Now let's say we wanted to replace one of these digital rack spaces. We can do it one of two ways. We can either right click over top of the digital rack space we want to replace and clear the rack space or we can very simply choose the replacement and drag and drop it over top. This will tell the patch hardware to now change the routing. This U87 obviously needs 48 volt phantom power. 
Located right below the first digital rack space of all the paths is the 48 icon. By clicking on it, it'll automatically prompt a phantom power warning. We obviously know this U87 can have phantom power, so we're going to click proceed. Now we're going to look at routing some mixing or mastering using the patch app. I'm going to scroll through and find the two outputs that I'm using. In this case, output 1 and output 2. Then I'm going to choose a compressor. An EQ. And then I want to add a little bit of color and texture to this. I'm going to use an HG2. Let's say hypothetically I can't find it in my list. I can very simply go to the top and type in two letters to search for it and immediately it pulls it up. This makes it really easy to find anything that you just are having a little bit of trouble with. I'm going to close that and then I'm going to go into my interface again. Right there we've set up a very nice mix or mastering session in, again, seconds. Makes it incredibly simple. Let's take a look at the hardware setup menu. By looking at the bottom of the hardware index, you'll see an icon called Hardware Setup. This will launch us into the hardware setup menu. In here is where you keep track of all of the analog equipment you have connected to your patch system. Let's take a look at number one. You'll notice that input 1 and output 1 are exactly the same. If I was to change the number, it's going to change to the corresponding output. It doesn't really matter whether I'm changing it in the input or the output. This is set up by default for the patch system because we recommend that any piece of analog equipment that has an input and an output, that they match the corresponding number that they're connected to. However, if you had a microphone, you obviously only have one side of the coin. So what we can do is click the lock icon, which unlinks the two channels and allows you to separately designate an input from an output. So in this case, we're just going to call this input mic, and we're going to call this one out. If you keep an eye on the hardware index to the left hand side here, when I click save hardware, it's going to populate two racks. One being the input, which is the microphone, and the other one being the output. This is important to note that every time you see two digital racks with the same number, the top one is always the input and the bottom one is always the output. These can now be separately routed from each other, opposed to something such as here, this API Pre, which the input and output are both located in one digital rack in the hardware index here because of the lock being closed. So these two are now linked. You'll notice to the left hand side of each input, there's a 48 volt safeguard switch with allow and deny. This is a safety feature to prohibit any piece of analog gear from ever receiving 48 volt phantom power from the patch system. I'll give you an example. Here we have an 1176 compressor setup. Obviously the switch is in deny. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to try and drag and drop this 1176 into the first slot and engage 48 volt phantom power. Immediately I'm going to be prompted saying it's been disabled for this path. It's going to tell me in the notification that I need to go into the hardware index and actually set it to allow it to have 48 before I can initiate it or enable it on this actual hardware compressor. So I'm going to go and I'm going to give you an example what happens when I do it just in case you accidentally had it set to allow. I'm going to save there in the hardware that we've changed this. When I try and click the 48, regardless, it's still going to prompt me and give me a heads up that 48 volt is being fed to this first slot in the path. So even at that, even if you make a mistake, it's still going to give you a heads up. Let's take a look at a few more features built into the hardware setup menu. At the top of the menu, you'll notice an import and an export list. This allows the user to be able to export their hardware list out of their existing Flock Audio patch app and into another. So you can get a separate instance of the Flock Audio patch app that's not connected to the hardware and still be able to manage and set up routings while you're away from your recording studio. Or let's say that you're actually a traveling audio engineer going to various recording studios. One of the recording studios you're going to has a Flock Audio patch system set up. 
You can have the audio engineer export their hardware list and send it to you so that you can be on the airplane, know the gear you're working with before you ever step foot in the studio and even set up routings. When you arrive, you can import your previously stored routings that you set up while you were in the air and get right to work with the artist. This makes the system incredibly flexible and the more Flock Audio patch systems in the industry, the stronger it is. At the bottom of the patch app, you'll notice our toggle control center. Right here, you can easily clear all paths, bank throughout the various paths, or you can turn on the front inputs or front outputs. This allows you to be able to quickly integrate outside analog audio gear into your patch system without having to crawl behind your desk or pull a rack back and start plugging it in. So we'll show you how this works. By clicking the front inputs, you're automatically going to get a notification that says that you're flipping 31 and 32 from the rear side of the chassis to the front. You'll also note 31 and 32 changing here in your hardware index. When I click close, you'll see front input 31 and front input 32. Same thing goes with your output. This now says that 31 and 32 that was previously connected on the rear side of the chassis has been moved to the front side. Soon as I click on these again, it's automatically going to go back to what the previous name or connection was. Let's take a look at the multiple unit setup. I'll click on the settings icon and then multiple unit setup. Here it'll launch the multiple patch system setup window. Right here we have our input and output passes. In here we have some designated or recommended setups and we also have custom user I.O. But for simplicity, let's go with a recommended one. By clicking on input outputs 25 through 32, this means I'm designating eight sends and eight returns between the two systems. So I can send eight analog signals from one patch system to the next and vice versa. Here you'll notice it automatically did a color assignment. It's saying that the first patch system is going to be outlined in blue and the other one is going to be outlined in red. When I click save setup, You'll notice to the left hand side here, there's a blue outline around all the digital racks. As I scroll down, you'll see that there's now a red outline. This means that it's identifying both patch systems within one single instance of the patch app. As I scroll down, you'll also see that it automatically renames some of these racks, which we designated as the sends and return passes. Here we have our return passes and up above we have our send passes. This allows us to be able to send analog signals from one system to the next and back if we need. If we didn't need this many returns and we needed more sends, we can very simply go back into the setup window and instead of actually designating them like this, we can go to custom user IO. This will now allow us to name whichever ones we want in the hardware setup menu separately. So we can name whichever ones we want as send passes and whichever ones we want as return passes. This makes the Flock Audio patch system and the multiple units set up very flexible and keeps it 100% analog. Well, there you have it, a walkthrough of the Flock Audio patch system. Thanks for tuning in and I hope you'll put a patch system into your recording studio and realize the potential on how it can streamline your workflow when working with analog audio equipment. Otherwise, let's get back to mixing. Thanks again.